Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going on? It's your girl, Jay, and we're back for another mag flashback. That's right. So as you can see, I changed my background. I'm trying to kind of not separate, but I have my podcast, Jay's Quick 3. If you haven't heard that or listened to it, go check it out. I'll have all my ads and my information at the end of the video, but um, I use I usually use my Jay's Quick 3 background, but I just want to separate a little bit because it's not always just my podcast and I will be making videos for. So I just changed up the background a little bit. I'm st it's still a work in progress. Probably going to change the um, intro music as well, but little by little, I'm growing and learning new things and you'll see that. So thank you for uh, coming to watch my video again. I appreciate you guys that have been watching uh, my series of the mag flashback, been getting a lot of good feedback. So I appreciate that. So this, I don't want to say this week, this time <laughs> we are, let me bring it up. We are covering Sister to Sister Magazine, May 1999. It is featuring t -Boz. Now you guys know the um, last time I did a Sister to Sister Magazine, it was featuring Left Eye. It was during a time where TLC was kind of having some internal issues and things. Um, Y'all were very vocal about um, some of the things that was going on as I presented it. <laughs> but this this um, this um, interview has nothing to do with that. I believe maybe t Boss touched on it. Again, I'm going through this magazine in real time. Like I always look over the magazines a little bit just to see if I can refresh my memory about anything. But mostly I get on here and turn the pages and in real time as I'm recording, go through these things. So I don't recall her really touching on anything as far as the left eye beef, because this actually had taken place before the whole Entertainment Weekly article came out and before all the stuff came out with left eye challenging them and things like that. So um, this wasn't as drama filled as some of the other ones, um, as, as the one that left eye was on. So Let's get into it. So we'll go here. Bam. Um, oh, I usually always show you guys the actual magazine to show you that I actually have it. It is here. The light is gleaming on it, but that's the Sister to Sister magazine featuring t Boz and Genuine, May 1999. So let's go ahead and get into it here. So... Comments or the comments, the contents of this one is um, they're talking about Mary J. Blige, Angela Bassett, um, Queen Latifah, Steve Harvey, Lil Kim, Clive Davis, Shantae Moore, Vanessa Williams. And if you guys don't remember, the Sister to Sister magazine was a gossip column, pretty much. It was... Um, owned by Jamie Farster Brown, and she was one of the premier people you went to for gossip. Now, there was back in those days, Wendy Williams as well, but I believe, and don't hold me to this because I don't remember, but she was featured on a radio show, and I don't know if it was Tom Joyner or Doug Banks. Don't remember, but I used to always tune in. I, I listened to all those shows on the radio, so... I don't remember exactly which one it was, but they would have a little gossip feature and Jamie Foster Brown will come through and talk about uh, different things. So, um, yeah, so she had her magazine that, fo that focused on that. So what else do we have here? So the what's going on around the industry pictures, as most of these, again, magazines will have, and we see... Pebbles, uh, who is this? Um, Jamie Foster Brown with Tyson Beckford. Uh, this was the sister to sister 10 year jam. So that she had a, a party and invited all these people that were there. Foxy Brown, I see. I believe that's Pep from Salt and Pepper. 
Um, who else do I see? Oh, Damon. Damon from Damon. Um, he owns or used, well, I guess FUBU is still a thing, maybe. But uh Damon, who is on Shark Tank now, he ran uh FUBU, and you can see him in a white sweater there. But yeah, just some people around town. Here's some more pictures around town, around um at this party. Some more pictures. There's uh, Denise Williams. Oh, look at Alicia Keys up top. If you can see that, she's the one in the black. Um, remember her braids? <laughs> this was 1999. So this was uh, right, not right in, in the beginning of Alicia Keys, but this was her very early years. Um, MC Light, Slick Rick is there, Shay Jones. And as I was talking about FUBU, Damon Johnson. Is that his last name? I don't want to get it wrong. Let me see what this man's name is. I guess Damon John, not Johnson, but he owns uh, FUBU. But this was just another advertisement in the magazine. FUBU was uh, big back then. This is the ladies collection here. Um, some more pictures just of some things. Um, you see Martin there. Angela Angela Bassett, Queen Latifah. That was talking about what I just mentioned earlier. Queen Latifah was going to be doing a movie with um, Denzel Washington. Uh, let's see what else. Naughty by Nature is on there. It was talking about Martin was going to be in a new movie called Sea Spot Run. I don't remember that movie. Um, who else is on here? There's an advertisement for Silk. If y'all remember that group, uh, Destiny's Child is Destiny's Child splitting up because that was the talk of the town around that time. This is before we did a bunch of member changes. So this says there was a vicious rumor going around about Destiny's Child. The word is that they have broken up because one of the girls had a bad case of diva-itis. But that's not totally true. The girls were having some problems, but they haven't broken up. They all sat down and worked everything out. I would hope so. They only made one record. It would be crazy to break up now. So they're working with a slew of hot producers on their new project, uh, which includes Daryl Simmons and Wyclef and Missy. We all know what happened with destiny's child that they did not necessarily break up they had some member changes and uh so it's just funny to see that 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 was a rumor at first and then we come to see years later that it actually did um happen that they switched out some members and then switched out some more members and ended up with dc3 who frankly i love and i've always been a fan of destiny's child and Sometimes you just have to go through some growing pains, but they became one of the best-selling female groups of all time. So shout out to Destiny's Child. I put this in here. Um, these are the, the twin. Well, they weren't twins. Twins, brothers from Nutty Professor. Do y'all remember that? So this is an advertisement for a, an album that they were coming out with, Hercules and Big Time. And it was called um, Chunk of Love. I don't remember if this ever came out. I don't remember if they had any songs out. I vaguely remember maybe one song. I don't really know. And I'm not really sure what they're up to now. Um, I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true. One of them passed away, but I don't, don't know that. And I don't want to put that out there if that's not true. But I just thought that was um, kind of funny that uh, they were going to put out an album. I just don't remember if they did or didn't. I never really listened to it. All right. So let's get into the first feature, which is t Buys of TLC. Now, this interview was done by Jennifer Mitchum. Um, Jamie sometimes does the interviews, but this person, Jennifer Mitchum, uh, was the one who did it. And pretty much this, this article just talked about t Boz and kind of some of the solo things she was doing outside of TLC and her dealing with like her sickness because, you know, she had sickle cell and uh, things of that nature. So I'll just go through this 
briefly as I can. I do have um, a couple of things I'm going to show you um, with dealing with uh, t bods and some of the solo things that she's done. Okay, so um, firstly, they talked about fan mail because again, 1999, this is when that album came out. They talked about the um, production that went into it, the um, the way that the CD looked. They talked about, you know, the way they shot it. They painted themselves. They looked kind of futuristic. And I don't think I have a picture. Now, I don't have a picture of it, but um, I can show you guys real quick. If you don't remember what the, the cover of Fan Mail looked like, it was there. So it was kind of futuristic. And uh, she just kind of talked about what they uh, what went into making that that uh, album cover. And you'll hear the pages turn. Um, so Jennifer asked, because she talked about the album cover and the makeup and all that stuff. She says, yeah, it looks good. I have a question for you, though. In this album, I hear fewer left eye raps this time. Lots of music and lots of chorus singing. Was it difficult making this album because you were all so busy? Is that part of the reason why I don't hear so many solos? And T-Boss says, that's just the way the songs were structured. But Left Eye did more songs on this album than the last album, which would have been crazy, sexy, cool. Um, the only difference is that you'll hear Chili leading some songs this time. But still, I'm singing verses here. Um, she sings the bridge and on certain songs, left eye will rap what well, she calls her Lisa. Lisa will also have rap songs on the B side of other songs and singles. So she goes on to say, um, okay, I must tell you, I do like the slower cuts, the dear lie, the come on down and I'm pretty. It's very interesting. And, um, I miss you so much, which I really, I enjoy those songs. Um, Come on down and miss you so much. Really good. Um, it's really nice cut too. And so T-Boss says, I wrote a book of in inspirational poetry. So Dallas helped me with helped me convert my poem Unpretty into a song. And Dear Live was derived from one of my poems as well. And then Jennifer says, uh, is this going to be in your thoughts, volume one? And T-Boss said, yeah, that's um, what they're in. And then Jennifer says, so that's a book of poetry. t, t says, yes. And uh, Jennifer says, I like this quote here, which is in the fan mail CD liner notes. It says, I've thought, I've watched, I've grown, made mistakes, listened, seen, experienced, reached, won, lived, disliked, gave, helped, survived, learned, lost, and I've thought of all the things that I've been through and Stand here still to live. God has blessed me, and to him I my heart I give. And T Boss says, that's how the book opens up. That's why it's called Thoughts. I thought about a lot of stuff. So all my thoughts about how I look at life is in that book. And then she says, Is it just po poetry? T Boss says, Is it's a pictorial book because each poem has a picture that symbolizes what I'm talking about. I'm talking about abortion, teen prostitution. There's something about how people need to relax, priorities, things that help people put things in, into perspective or just make you think. I even have stuff um, that may sound stupid, but make you think like when people cut off ambulances. <laughs> if that were you or your mom dying in the ambulance, uh, would you pull over quick? I have one that's talking about groupies, groupieism. I didn't know that was a word. And how to get into it um, and what it really means, it's thoughts. And um, she kind of talks about when the book is coming out. t -Boss said, no, when the book was coming out yet. Um, why did she decide to do the book? She just said she has so much. Um, she's so such a creative that she needed pretty much like an outlet. Um, she had wrote so many things down in so many poems that she decided to do a book. So real quick, before we move on, um, I do have, when I tell y'all I was a fan of TLC and particularly of t -Boz, I was. So I'm going to show you guys um, the book 
thoughts because I did buy it when it came out. And again, my allergies are always an issue. It seems like when I turn on the camera, that's when the allergies start. So if you see a lot of cuts in this video, it's because I had to sneeze or do something, blow my nose or whatever. But let's get back to thoughts. So I did buy thoughts when it came out. This is what it looked like. And it's kind of hard to like show you all the stuff that's inside, but as you can see, I can probably move this light out of the way. Maybe you can see a little bit better. So that is thoughts. And I mean, she has, um, like she writ, she wrote a lot of like, information just about her growing up, her relationship with her dad, um, her being sick, along with some of the poems. So there are poems in here too, but it's all almost like an autobiography um, where she's kind of telling her own story in this, which is kind of a prequel to um, if you guys read her, her uh, book, A Sick Life. Uh, it pretty much kind of talks about some of the same things, just goes in depth with a lot of um, stories about TLC and things they used to do and things, all the trouble they used to get into. Not like bad trouble, but they used to be pranksters and they like to have fun and things like that. Um, but the opener to this book, so she wrote a little, she has a little thing here I'm going to read about the book. So when TLC was between albums, I had no way to release my creativity. One night feeling put out by my boyfriend and wondering about how much women had to go through to make rela relationships work. I sat down and started writing poems. Unpretty was the first. Up until then, I hadn't realized how badly I needed to release what I was feeling inside. They were my thoughts from the heart and my art. The poems cover a whole range of topics, love, relationships, heartbreak, body image, family, society, abortion, and many other things. They each mean a lot to me, and I hope they inspire you, give you a different perspective on what's going on around you, or just help you relax. You'll find a little bit of me in these words, and maybe you'll find a little bit of yourself or someone you know. I reached out to my friends, including my fans, while I was putting thoughts together, and they really inspired me and help me figure out which stories to tell. Stories about important people in my life, like my mom, who's always been there for me, my family, and my TLC partners, Lisa and Rosanda, and those who have all helped me along the way. I've had to deal with some tough stuff, like my relationship with my dad, who left when I was three, and my never-ending battle with sickle cell, the bad high school years, my self-image problems, and my fight to survive in this crazy music business. Sharing these stories and poems have has helped me face big issues in my life. Maybe they'll help you too, or maybe they'll give you a better understanding of who I am as a person. I can only express myself so much through my songs on my own, though I can let you into my heart and mind. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts with you. Love, Tion. So that is thoughts. Um, and it got, if you are interested, I will be happy to go over this book in detail. Uh, hit me up and let me know if you want me to. I can. Also, there was a bonus that came with this book. So I don't remember if I bought this separately or it came together. I want to, I feel like it came in a box and there was this book and sorry, y'all, my nose is itching. I don't know why. Um, there was this book and then there was this CD, an audio version of the book. So it's a little torn up It's old, but as you can see, it has a CD in it. And it's the audio version of the book of her like um, going over the poems or she's reading the poem. So that came with it, I believe. Now, I don't know if this is still available. I do not know if this is something you can go get now, maybe on Amazon, maybe on um, eBay. Somebody has it. But yeah, 
So it came with the book and a spoken word audio CD of thoughts. So again, like I said, I was a very um, big, big, big fan of T-Boz. So of course I was going to buy whatever, whatever she had. So that's that. So getting back to the uh, article. <laughs> so during uh, continuing this article, um, during this time, T-Boz was 28. She was saying she would turn 29 on April 26th of that year. Uh, she talked about how young T-Boz, T-Boz, how young TLC looks and people think still continue to not take them as seriously because they think they are kids, even though this was their third album. Um, talked about her iconic hairstyle <laughs> and who does it. Um, and a lot of people, it's funny, I was watching some old videos of TLC um, because I, I have a bunch of old videos and people think that, okay, yeah, T-Boz did have that bob with the, the two strands hanging down in the front, but she also had different colored hair. She also had a time where she was wearing, she had like a high ponytail. She went through different variations of her hair, but most people only kind of remember her with, um, the way her hair is with the bob and the two strands hanging down. It was always some form of that, I guess. Um, people always remember her by. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, she talked about having sickle cell. Jennifer asked her, how are you feeling? I heard that at one point you went to a special clinic out west for sickle cell uh, anema. And T-Boss said, I don't know where that... <laughs> Where they got that from, that was all wrong. When you all printed that one time, I don't know who told you that, but I was laughing like, that's not it. And she says, are you serious? Uh, you weren't in a special hospital on the treatment? t says, hell no. I went and saw an herbalist and all he did was put me on a different system of how to eat healthy and all that, but I didn't stay in the clinic. I just got an appointment in LA and spent a month with him. Ain't nobody about to hold me down like that. That's boring. I can't do that. And she, you know, goes on to talk about, are you a spokesman for sickle cell? Um, and T-Boss says, uh, my whole thing was to get with the national region because I can't go to everyone's function in every state. So if I'm in an, in the national board, I'll be able to raise money all over or overall. And it'll go to the same cause to find a cure. That's the goal. That's why everybody's working so hard. Um she says, I've been getting calls. This is Jennifer. I've been getting calls from a lady who has a seven-year-old son with sickle cell anemia. Uh, he's been in the newspaper several times, and he's had 32 operations. I don't really understand what a person goes through when they have sickle cell anemia. Um, and I don't know if our readers understand either. t Boss says, um, I can say this. Everybody's different, and no, no one's pain is the same. I mean, it's all similar and excruciating and it hurts very bad. I'm 28 and I just found out exactly what I had when I was 28. Um, but I can honestly say this is for anybody. All the drugs they give in a hospital is bad for you. They give you one thing to get rid of the pain, but it causes another problem. It breaks down your organs. With me being sick since I was born, me and my mother have learned throughout the years what helps me and what doesn't. You, you learn new things. And so she, Jennifer says, so you didn't know all this time you had sickle cell. And t Boss said, I knew I had sickle cell, but that's not totally what I have. I have a high percentage of sickle cell trait. I have a high percentage of sickle cell trait, which is 83% mixed with beta. Y'all, I'm not even going to try to act like I know how to pronounce this. Beta something and arthritis. <laughs> I'm just mixed up all over. So with that combined... I have the same pain as my cousin who has full-blown sickle cell anemia with all the symptoms. Uh, note in a future on the couch article, we'll explain about what sickle cell anemia is. Um, Jamie mentioned to me that you can feel the vein, the blood running through your veins. And t -Boss says, I can feel blood move if it hurts. I can explain it this way. If somebody took a butcher knife and they stabbed you constantly <laughs> and never stop. That's what the pain feels like. What's happening is the blood is clotting, causing your joints to ache and oxygen can't get to your lungs. So you can't breathe. So you have to put oxygen in your nose to ox 
oxygenate yourself. I can say I can say that word. <laughs> And they give you IV fluid to make your blood flow, but they give you drugs to cover it up. It doesn't mean the pain is gone. It's still there. You're just zooted like you're out of your mind. Um, so they go into like her diet and kind of what she's been doing to treat that. Then they get into um, the album and... Jennifer says, after hearing this album, some folks are telling me this doesn't sound anything like TLC. They say it doesn't sound like you guys at all. T-Boss says, the whole album? Jennifer says, yeah. T-Boss says, that's funny. That's like saying I don't think deep anymore or something. My answer for that and for people who think that is, you grow. My answer for that and for people who think that is, you grow. Every girl has a piece of themselves individually and creative on this album. You can't know all of me because you don't sit by me every day. You're not there when I grow. So on, the only way I can express myself to people um, who don't know me is through my music, my singing, my songs. This is me. This does not. This does sound like me. If it didn't, I wouldn't sing it. No one else thought this up and told us to sing it. I wrote on five songs. Two of the songs came from my poems. How can you say that's not me when it came from my heart and my poem? You just don't know that side of me. Now you do. I'm intro introducing it to you and I hope you like it. If you don't, then hey. Uh, she talks about um, Jennifer gets into like what some of them are doing individually. Um, she says you all have so many different projects that you're working on right now. Left Eye has the MTV show The Cut. You still have She Entertainment. And what is Chili doing? And T-Bi says, uh, she's raising her son, Tron. She's she's a very good mother. I can't really speak on her behalf, but I know she's interested in movies and other things. All of us are. Lisa has a new group, Black, and her production company. She has a management company. I've been working on um, an animated series. They talk about that a little bit. Something that was uh, supposed to come out, I don't think it ever did come out. She says she's working on a clothing line called Grungy Glamorous. And of course, I'm sure most of you have seen Belly, but she uh, also starred in Belly. And uh, let's see, she talked about She Entertainment, uh, that She Entertainment was um, strictly for... Um, like productions she wanted to do. So the cartoon was going to be through that. The book was done through She Entertainment. She wasn't in interested in managing or having groups. I guess there was a rumor about her managing um, a music group. She said that wasn't true because she's not interested. She doesn't have the time to be managing other people or the patients. <laughs> um, at this time, T-Boz was single. They kind of talked about relationships a little bit. Uh, we know that she dated Dalvin. She just said, you know, her and Dalvin are still really cool. They're friends, no hard feelings. Um, one funny thing in this <laughs> article, um, Jennifer talked about, I guess, T-Boz had dissed Jamie or something. So she says, Jamie told me to ask you why you didn't give her any sugar at some party or something they were at. T-Boz says, you know what? I looked over. I was in a real bad mood, but she sure didn't get her butt up and come speak to me either. I thought the same thing. Like, no, she isn't over there partying with Puffy's mom and everybody, and she ain't gonna come, she ain't going to say nothing. So I sat on the couch. I talked to Pebbles. By then, everybody kept bugging me, so I broke out. I came in there for 15 minutes and walked right back out, <laughs> out that door. Um, and she said, you just tried to get out of there? She was like, yeah, because I came to support everybody. I didn't want to stay. I mean, I'm used to that stuff. They aren't really eating and I want to eat. You got all, you got tables up, no food. So it's crowded with people. They're bumping everybody every five seconds. I'm too old for that at 28. <laughs> now, if you want to call me uh, back when you got something cooking, then we can talk. Um, they talked about a little bit about their situation with LaFace. Uh, by this time, they had already done their deal and re renegotiated their contract. So at that point, they were kind of in a good place with LaFace. Um, they talked a little bit about bankruptcy, talked about her brother a little bit. So it's just little things in there 
in here. Nothing too salacious, nothing too crazy. Um, like I said, this was before any major drama was going on. So there's some pictures of it. Um, this is my favorite picture of TLC. Favorite, favorite picture of TLC. I love it. Um, I love it in the black and white. I think it's a classic picture. And a fun fact. Um, I don't think, nope, that's not, that's not the one. I was going to say, I wrote a poem. So a while back, I got to meet Chili and T-Boz. This was after Left Eye passed away. And uh, they were doing a um, seminar. They were part of a sem seminar to talk about HIV and AIDS. This was, ooh, maybe, I can't tell you when. So if Left Eye passed away 2002, it had to be after that. But maybe 2003. Um, am I right? Maybe around 2003. I can't remember, guys. Very long time ago, right? <laughs> That's what, 20 years ago. Um, but there was a seminar that this community center in Houston was doing because at that time I lived in Houston. And uh, T-Boz and Chili were there, very excited. I sat front row and listened to them speak. I got to see them up close and personal. I was getting my life. I was really enjoying it. And uh, afterwards, they weren't supposed to have a meet and greet, but me and some of the people that were there were like, we're going to try to see if we can get T-Boz and Chili. Like, we want to take pictures with them. And um, so after it, after the thing was over, we couldn't figure out where they were. We were just hanging out outside the building. All of a sudden, we see Chili and T-Boz coming out of a side door. We run over to them. Everybody's like waving their hands and trying to get pictures and all those things. And um, T-Boz was a beeline right to the car. She wasn't trying to, you know, talk to us. I think she cracked a smile, maybe waved. But again, uh, this is right after T uh, Left Eye's passing. I know that you know, they took it hard, especially T-Boz. And uh, she probably just didn't want to be bothered. Also, maybe who knows if she didn't feel well or whatever, but she didn't want to participate in that. And it's understandable. I didn't, you know, I didn't care. I was just happy to see her. I think I have pictures of that. I would have to find those because I took it with a port, uh, a disposable camera. There was no, I don't think there were camera phones. If they were, they weren't popular then. I had a Kodak disposable camera, took those, snapped those pictures <laughs> with that. Maybe, or maybe I had a digital camera. I don't remember, but it was a camera and not, not like a camera phone. And, uh, but Chili did, you know, try to say hi to as many fans as she could. And I wrote a poem about the past in the left eye. I used, I, I thought I used this background picture, but I didn't. I think I used a picture, a different picture of left eye just by herself as a background. And I put the words over it and I was able to give it to Chili. I told her how much I loved them and how I was a fan since 92. And I grew up listening to them and all these things. And then I told them, you know, of course, how sad I was that Left Eye had passed away and that I wrote a poem that I wanted her and T-Boz to have and blah, blah, blah. So I was able to give them that poem. I still have a copy of that Maybe one day I'll share it. Um, maybe, maybe not. Because as an artist, as Erica Badu says, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit because I am. So I may share it. I may not. We'll see. Moving on. Let's get into this genuine um, interview and, and not so much an interview. I just want to point out <laughs> about this, this uh, magazine. So Sister to Sister. Sister to Sister magazine is not, as I've said that before, it's just a gossip magazine. It has articles. It talks about up and coming things or things that was going on around that time. It is not like a write on word up um, fresh. None of those magazines where you have full pages of uh, full page pictures of people that you can pull out and hang up for whatever reason. And we know Genuine was like the hot guy back then. They had full page pictures of this man. I didn't even put all the pictures on here that were in this magazine. This magazine, this article was 13 pages long and like five pages, full pages of just pictures of genuine like this. Um, 
or half some of them were like half pictures like this like very it wasn't it wasn't a long interview it was a pretty short interview but tons of pictures of genuine so i put some of them in in here like i said i didn't put all of them in there but look at these pictures <laughs> not gonna lie genuine was definitely eye candy back then but yeah, tons of pictures of genuine. And like I said, I didn't even put all the pictures in there. There were tons of, of other pictures of genu genuine. But in this article, um, they pretty much talked about his new album that was going to be coming out 100% genuine. Um, that's the album that has so anxious on there. Um, nobody's business. Uh, what else is on there? I was just looking it up. Um, so anxious. None of your friends business um same old g those were some of the songs that he released um back then but he's talking about getting ready for that album doing the production on them that you know he had just been touring with um timberland and Aaliyah, and how he was working with static um during this album with the production static had done are you that somebody we know he has passed away since uh, rest in peace to Static. Static also did uh, Lollipop by Lil Wayne. And um, he was part of the group. And I always forget their name, even though I have their album. I always forget their name. Um, let me see if I can look it up because I, I hate to um, forget what group he was with. Playa. Playa was the name of the group. But they also did a lot of background vocals like Timberland, Missy, um, Genuine, Tweet, Aaliyah, Playa, Magoo, all of them, as you know, if you remember back then, they were all like this big kind of like conglomerate family that just did a lot of music with each other. Timberland, Missy producing, static producing, um, doing a lot of writing on each other's albums, doing a lot of background vocals on each other's albums. Many of their videos featured all of them. So I don't know. I don't think they had a name, but it was just that group of people were always together um, during that time. So um, he talked about that. He just talked about some of the songs that he was working on he wanted to make sure that it's, it's a funny part on here that the person who was doing this interview was saying he said when the album comes out and the person was named nikki turner when the album comes out you need to go buy it and she was like oh i already got it and he was like no 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 i need you to go buy it and she was like no i got it and he was like no i need you to go purchase it and she was like, well, look, if you, I'll send you $12. Like, it's not that big a deal. He was like, no, 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 it's not the same. I need you to go buy it, like purchase it. So it counts, right? But I thought that little back and forth was pretty funny. Um, he talked about growing up in Maryland. Um, at that time, he was still living in Maryland. Um, he talked about, you know, being a sex symbol, how his body is nice and all this other stuff. Like she was just asking him questions about that. Um, and then like what he likes to do for fun. So like I said, nothing really um, too crazy. She did ask him if he was a stripper and he didn't answer that. <laughs> I, I had never heard that, but maybe. Um, if y'all know, leave me a comment in the down below. Um, they talked a little bit about traveling as he's touring. Um, <laughs> she asked the question, I heard you were trying to hook up with Janet Jackson. And he says, I wasn't trying to hook up with Janet Jackson. They asked me who I liked in the industry and what do I like about them? And I said, Janet, but no, he wasn't trying to hook up with her. Um, and that's really it. It wasn't anything, like I said, too profound. It was mainly just about uh, his pictures. Uh, moving on, some more out and about pictures. We see Whitney Houston there with, um, I believe that's Monica and uh, Mary J. Blige. I'm trying to get to that picture or that page so I can see closely. Yeah, so that is Whitney, Monica, Faith, Jamie Foster Brown, and MJB there. Uh, this was, I don't know exactly where they say this was, but it was some, some event they were at. Um, I don't know some of the gossip that was going on in this, ep this episode, in this 
addition. I don't think it was anything too crazy. Um, Dalvin was coming out with his own, Dalvin from Jodeci coming out with his own um, clothing line. Uh, they talked about Kim, Lil' Kim. Uh, she has a record label called Queen B, and Lil' C's was going to be her first project on her label. Um, they talked about her working with Puffy. So nothing too crazy. I don't think uh, anything uh, stood out. Vanessa Williams was with Rick Fox during that time. And that's pretty much it. So at the end of the magazine, they always have these top five that they like to um, promote what songs were hot or what songs they felt um, were hot during that time. Oh, real quick before I get to that, because uh, this was out of order. They did do a little um, markup on Grace Jones, who was model, actress, singer, extraordinaire. There was a fashion show that she was involved in and shout out to Grace Joan. Um, <laughs> there was a song she did. Love on Top of Love, I think was the name of the song that came out when I was a little younger. And I just remember my great grandma used to sing that. Whenever that video came on, she would sing it and she would be like, you got to prove that love. And I'm like, no, grandma, that's not what she's saying. She's saying love on top of love. Nope. She's saying you got to prove that love. So I always thought that was so funny. My great grandma singing that. But anyway, uh, getting back to um, the top five, the top five, they said, um, my favorite girl by David Hollister. He's doing you wrong by shy. Uh, if they knew by TLC 808 by black and Tranquility by Al Johnson. So those were the top five jams that um, they were promoting during the May 1999 edition of Sister to Sister. And that is it, you guys. We have come to the end. Let me get back there. Yeah, we're here. So, um, so excuse my um allergies and the you didn't hear the sneezing and the sniffling and things like that i do sound sound stuffed up but thank you for again tuning in to another edition of mag flashback i have many more i am working on improving the show every single time that i record i appreciate you guys is um watching and sharing remember like comment subscribe uh Check out my website, jaysquick3pod.com. Everything is there that you can find all my social media, my Instagram, my TikTok, my Twitter. All that is there. If you guys have any comments, questions, or anything like that, feel free to comment below or hit me up on my site. Um, I have several different ways you can contact me um, as far as that is concerned. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing... Um, reviewing maybe a magazine live. If you guys want to tune in, we can do that. Um, I'm just thinking of different ideas that I want to do with this uh, series. Um, maybe also considering doing a giveaway. For those of you that are interested, again, please feel free to hit me up and uh, we can do that. So I don't think I have any more announcements. Nope, I don't have any more announcements, so I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys again for tuning in, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.